Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. Another in our series of free webinars presented by our physical therapist. Today we have Danielle, Danny Smith, uh, presenting a webinar about keeping your lungs strong and healthy. Uh, I'm gonna give you a little intro uh, regarding Danny's background and then we'll turn it over to her and let her get going. Uh, Danielle has been a physical therapist at GTC's Bedford location since 2016. She completed her Bachelor of Science in Community Health from LSU Shreveport and her Doctorate of Physical Therapy from LSU Health Shreveport. Danielle has been an APTA member since 2013, has been certified in dry needling and is part of the orthopedic section. As a former ballet dancer, Danielle has a passion for the performing arts and has been a member of the International Association for Dance Medicine and Science since 2017. She enjoys traveling with her husband, being outdoors and spending time with family. Danielle's goal as a physical therapist is to help return patients to full participation in their daily lives and provide each patient with a positive rehabilitation experience. So I'm gonna let uh, Danny get started. Please remember that all of these videos will be posted on our YouTube channel. Uh, be sure to check out Facebook, uh, Great Therapy Center's Facebook page for future, future webinars. All right, Danny. Thank you, Brad. Um, again, hi, it's Danny. Um, I want to talk to you today about how we can keep our lungs strong, um, how to properly breathe and increase lung capacity. So let's just jump into it. Um, got some objectives here. So we'll do a kind of a short overview of how our bodies get air in and out of the lungs, uh, mechanics of breathing in and out. We'll talk about ways to keep your lungs healthy and then how to increase lung capacity with physical activity and breathing exercises and techniques. And then um, I just wanna to touch on how posture plays a role in breathing um, and give you a few postural exercises and stretches. So first, the muscles of inspiration or breathing in or inhalation. Um, there's some primary muscles that are used for this. There's two primary muscles. Um, one is the diaphragm, which is the main muscle of inspiration. It's a large muscle that separates the lungs from the abdomen. And then the second muscle, um, primary muscle of inspiration are the external intercostals. And they're small muscles um, on the outside of your rib cage, which you can see there in the picture. So these guys here are the external intercostals um, in between the ribs. And then your diaphragm, which is the main muscle of inspiration is right here. Um, you also have some accessory muscles used for inspiration. Um, these are muscles found around the shoulders, neck, and the upper chest that help when the primary muscles are unable to move enough air in and out of the lungs. Um, it's not common for these muscles to be used in normal breathing. Um, if somebody is using these muscles for normal breathing, um, they probably have some kind of respiratory disorder, maybe COPD or asthma, something like that. Um, like when you see somebody breathing really labored where their whole chest is kind of you know, moving up and down, um, they're recruiting some of these accessory muscles to help them get the air in. But with normal, just breathing in and out, you know, resting, sitting and resting, um, typically these muscles aren't used. So the mechanics of breathing in, um, when you breathe in, the diaphragm contracts and moves downward. And this increases the space in your chest cavity and your lungs expand to fill that space. The muscles between your ribs also help enlarge the chest cavity. They contract to pull your rib cage both upward and outward when you inhale. And as your lungs expand, air is sucked in through your nose and mouth and then the air travels down your windpipe and into your lungs. Okay, so again, the diaphragm is the main muscle used with breathing in, and those rib muscles just kind of help to bring that rib cage up and out to give your chest, um, to let that chest expand and give enough room for your lungs to, to fill that space. Now, muscles of expiration or breathing out. Um, typically, when you breathe out, this is a passive thing. Um, typically, there aren't any muscles that are used for this. Um, but when a person is unable to breathe out enough air, the accessory muscles kick in. Um, and for expiration, those are your abdominal muscles. So again, when you breathe out or exhale, your diaphragm and rib muscles relax, reducing the space in the chest cavity. And as your chest cavity gets smaller, your lungs deflate, like releasing the air from a balloon. 
And at the same time, carbon dioxide rich air flows out of your lungs through the windpipe and out of your nose and mouth. So again, when you breathe out, typically it's passive. You don't require any muscles to do so. Um, unless again, you maybe you have a respiratory disorder or say you're working out really hard and then you're taking these deeper breaths and recruiting some of those accessory muscles to help you move air in and out of your lungs. Um, just a few tips for keeping your lungs healthy. So, I mean, the obvious one, don't start smoking or quit smoking if you smoke. Um, avoid secondhand smoke. Limit exposure to outdoor pollution and reduce indoor air pollution, um, like keeping your living spaces ventilated and clean to prevent a buildup of allergens, dust, and mold. Um, having something like an air purifier can help with that. And then wear protective equipment. So if you work in an industry that you are around a lot of dust or allergens or chemical fumes, some kind of face mask or face shield to help um, protect yourself. And then physical activity. Um, physical activity strengthens both the heart and the lungs, so they work more efficiently. So let's talk more about that. Um, so increasing lung capacity with physical activity. Um, aerobic exercise, or what you think of when we talk about cardio, is a great way to do that. Um, some easy ways that you can kind of incorporate some cardio into your daily routine is by adding some hills into your walks or walk at a faster pace. Um, take some light hand weights or cans of soup or something in your hand um, while you're walking. Um, if you're using a treadmill, using the interval or random setting on the treadmill. Um, all of these things increase the intensity and the variability of your workouts, which raises your heart rate, um, makes you breathe harder, and ultimately can help improve your lung capacity. Um, so again, cardio can really be anything biking, swimming, jogging, you know, uh, walking at a fast pace, um, exercise classes, which we aren't really doing too much of right now. There's a lot of great apps out there that are free right now. Um, so you can exercise, you know, from, from your home. Um, but anything that will get your heart rate up, get you breathing a little bit harder um, is great for increasing lung capacity. This exercise um, is really interesting. I came across this, um, I posted in my references a link to this article and it goes into more of the science behind why this exercise is really good for increasing lung capacity, but I just kind of want to give you the, the basics. Um, it's called the 90-90 bridge with the ball and balloon technique. Um, it's developed by the Postural Restoration Institute. Um, helps put the body in a good position in order to allow the diaphragm optimal ability to perform both its respiratory and postural roles. So to do this exercise, you lay flat on your back, like the woman in the picture, with your feet flat on the wall and your knees bent to a 90 degree angle. Um, put a little small ball or maybe a folded pillow between your knees. One arm will go above your head and then the other arm will help stabilize the balloon in your mouth. And to do the exercise, you'll take a deep breath in through your nose, and then you'll breathe out through your mouth to blow up the balloon. Now, in between breaths, um, you don't want to pinch the balloon off or bite it down um, with your teeth to hold the air inside. They want you to put your tongue to the top of your mouth to prevent airflow from coming out of the balloon um, and cycle through about four breaths. So that's really hard to breathe in through your mouth, breathe. Uh, breathe in, sorry, through your nose, out through your mouth, and then use your tongue to prevent the airflow from coming out of the balloon. Um, it's a really tough exercise, but it's really good to help um, increase the, the strength of your diaphragm. Um, the next couple slides I included, they have specific kind of step-by-step -step, um, directions on how to perform this exercise. If you'd like to access that at a later time, um, like Brad said, the presentation will be available um, on our YouTube page and um, be on our Facebook page as well that's for Greater Therapy Centers. So you can come back at a later time and kind of read through these instructions. Um, but it's talking about basically um, what I just walked you through in just a little bit more detail. Okay, so a few more exercises that are a little bit simpler to do um, to also increase lung capacity to help strengthen the diaphragm. Um, there's some breathing techniques. Um, one is diaphragmatic breathing or belly breathing. Um, you can do this by lying on your back with your knees slightly bent and your head on a pillow, or you can do this sitting up in a chair. 
place one hand over your upper chest and then one hand below your rib cage, allowing you to feel the movement of your diaphragm. You wanna slowly inhale through your nose, feeling your stomach press into your hands. And then keep your other hand, the one on your chest, as still as possible. And then exhale using pursed lips as you tighten your stomach muscles, again, keeping your upper hand still. So it's a breath in through your nose and then out through your mouth, through pursed lips. And again, the, the goal of this exercise is to feel all of the movement coming from the hand over your stomach where your top hand is gonna stay still. And that's kind of using that diaphragm um, to breathe in and out um, and reducing some of the accessory muscles from helping. It's a lot tougher than you would think. <laughs> Uh, okay, another exercise, again, to help with lung capacity is called pursed lip breathing. Um, so to start by sitting and relaxing your neck and shoulders, keeping your mouth closed, inhale slowly through your nose for two counts. Pucker or purse your lips so that you're going to whistle. And then exhale slowly by blowing air through your pursed lips for a count of four. So that's in through your nose for two counts, and then a little bit longer, four counts for the exhale. Um, this is really good to slow down your breathing um, to help get stale air out of your lungs and then get more fresh air, more oxygen into your lungs and into the system. Okay, um, another, another tool that you can use to increase lung capacity is the spirometer. Um, it will exercise your lungs, it helps retrain the lungs to take slow, deep breaths, and it increases lung capacity and improves the ability to breathe. Um, now, a lot of times people will get this after they've had surgery um, as a tool to use to help prevent pneumonia, um, but you can also use this if you're healthy or you haven't had surgery or, aren't, or you know, don't have any respiratory disorders, um, just as a tool for exercising your lungs and your diaphragm. So you put the, the, this end here into your mouth, and then whenever you breathe in, this yellow part will move up. And then when you exhale, it will go back down. So you can you know, take your maximum inhalation and set that over here just as your starting point. And then with time, you can try to raise that. Um, and then therefore, you know, increasing the strength of your diaphragm, increasing your lung capacity. Um, it's, it's a great tool to use for that. Um, okay, so I want to touch a little bit on posture and how that plays a role in breathing. Um, if you see the picture here, this guy has some pretty bad posture, but kind of typical posture that you see out and about in the community. It's got some kyphosis going on, which is um, excessive curve in the upper back and a forward head, rounded shoulders. And he also has some lordosis going on, which is this curve here in your low back. Um, bulging of the belly. Um, when you're in a posture like this, it's closing down on your chest cavity. Um, everything's compressed. It's going to make it a lot harder to take in uh, a deep breath or like the maximum amount of air possible. Um, it's just not a good position for optimal breathing. Um, these slides here, this is about um, standing and sitting, so good posture in both a standing and sitting position. Um, these are optimal postures. Um, when you're standing, um, your ear ideally should be in line with your shoulder, which is in line with your hips and your ankles, so a nice straight line here. Um, see from the front, the ears are level, shoulders are level, hips are level. Um, everything is set right just to get yourself in a good, a good position to take a deep breath in and a deep breath uh, out. And in sitting, um, again, ears in line with the shoulders, your hips are bent to about 90 degrees, knees flat on the floor. Um, Devin did a good presentation on posture and ergonomics in the office, so I definitely would encourage you to go back and listen to that um, for a lot more information on, on a good setup um, at the desk. But this is just kind of briefly, um, you know, optimal posture and sitting and, and standing for breathing. Um, I also wanna give you just a few exercises that you can do to help improve your posture. Um, there's just a few stretches um, for the typical kind of rounded shoulder posture, some things that you can do to 
help stretch out your chest and get yourself out of a poor posture. Um, the first is called a pec stretch. So in between the door frame with one arm on each side, you wanna gently lean your body forward until you feel a good stretch through your chest and hold that for about 20 to 30 seconds, about three times. The scapular retractions, you can do this sitting or standing. Um, you'll want to just squeeze gently your shoulder blades together and relax. And then squeeze your shoulder blades together and relax. Um, and again, this is just gonna help open up your chest, kind of get you out of this rounded shoulder position. The chin tuck, uh, so we get to give yourself a double chin. I've been working on that, being home a little bit more than usual. <laughs> but um, you just want to retract your head backwards, so you don't want to look down. Um, you want to keep your chin level and just gently retract backwards and relax. Backwards and relax. Again, about 20 to 30 times. And the last one is called the upper trap stretch. Um, one arm behind your back, and then the other arm just helps to gently guide your ear towards your shoulder. You don't want to pull too hard on your neck. You just want it to be a very gentle stretch, and you'll feel this along the outside of your neck here. And then holding that position for about 20 to 30 seconds, and then doing the same on the other side, about two to three times per side. Um, here's some references where I got some of my information. Again, there's a link in there to that article um, with the exercise with the balloon. And then um, I would just like to say thank you for joining me. Um, my contact information is here, my email address and the phone number to our clinic. Um, if you have any questions about what I talked about or if you would like some specific information or if you think physical therapy could benefit you in any way, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, we are also offering telehealth right now, so we could do virtual visits, um, you know, from the comfort of your home. So that's an option as well. Um, so please, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. Thanks, Danny. Uh, great information. Uh, very topical, of course, and, and things that we can use going forward. Uh, please don't forget to check our Greater Therapy Center's Facebook page. That will have all of the information for registration for our upcoming webinar series. We're running through May 1st every weekday at 10 a.m. Lots of cool topics presented by our physical therapist. Thanks for joining us, and we hope to talk to you soon. Thanks. Thank you.